Good morning. We come again today, and now we move on from chapter 11 of Isaiah to chapter 12. Now, chapter 12 is quite simply a psalm. You know, these scriptures were set down by Isaiah, perhaps at different times. As we go through it, we find they suddenly jump back again, then jump forward, then jump back again. At this particular time, he probably felt led to write a psalm. And as we find these psalms in the Old Testament, it's good to stop and read them and think about them. Because very often God speaks to us through the psalms. We have, of course, the great books of the psalms which are given to us. This was the hymn book, if you like, of the Jewish people. This, these are the songs they sang when they went to worship God. But very often, the, the pro- prophets themselves would write in this particular form and write it in order to praise God. See, Isaiah had just come to this chapter 11 and he'd had this prophetic vision of the sun coming th- forth from the root of Jesse and the Spirit of God resting upon him and the great vision of the end time when all manner of things are put right. When in fact, what what Paul speaks about in Romans, he said, Paul says, the whole of creation is waiting with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. The revealing of the sons of God, which will come about when Jesus returns. Because in those days, even nature itself will be put right. See, when Adam fell in in, uh, in Eve, in, sorry, when Adam fell in Eden, a fracture took place right throughout the whole of creation. It brought death and suffering into the world. It wasn't just Adam who suffered. The whole of creation was suffering with him. Now Jesus is going to come back and he's going to repair that fracture by his death on the cross. He's destroyed the power of sin. When he comes back, he will destroy the wicked one. He will take away and put him in his place. All these things are going to take place. And then the whole of creation will be healed. And suddenly there will be no more anguish, no more fighting, no more quarreling. All these things will be put right. We don't know exactly how it will work out because the very words themselves can cause confusion. But having had this particular vision, Isaiah now sits down and writes a psalm. And this is the psalm he wrote. It's given to us in chapter 12. I will praise you, Lord, although you are angry with me, Your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation. You know, as we read these psalms, we can almost feel God speaking to us sometimes. That's why the the book of Psalms is such a a marvellous document. Because as we read it, we can almost feel somehow that God gets inside us and he starts speaking to us through these very words. And as I read these words in the book of the prophet Isaiah, I can almost feel my spirit getting thrilled inside as I'm actually reading it. Then Isaiah goes on to give me instructions and to give you instructions as well. He says simply, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, For he has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. See, Isaiah is is almost overcome by the visions he's actually receiving. And he just wants to sit back and he wants to praise God. And he doesn't want just to praise God for what is happening in Israel and what will be happening in Israel. He wants to praise God for what God will be doing in all the nations of the world. Bring all the nations together. One small thing, and this is probably an aside, but something for you just to think about. In the book of the prophet Isaiah and in the other scriptures as well, we often get reference to the traders of Tarshish. You see it. Jonah, for instance, when he runs away from God, when God gives him a job to do he got a, a, a ship going to Tarshish. Where was Tarshish? People have often wondered about this. Was it some country in the Mediterranean we know little about? But as you read it more carefully, you will find that Tarshish was a place 
were sent out ships right throughout the new known world, great traders. And in the country where they came from, you could actually dig tin out of the ground. Where was Tarshish? Yes. Where were you living now? Britain. That was Tarshish. That's the place. That is the place that has been referred to, even in these ancient scriptures. We truly are the children of Tarshish. We are mentioned there, and very often we are spoken about as the isles at the end of the world. You know, I heard a, a, a preacher speaking lately, and he was, he was saying about the isles at the end of the world. And he said, well, of course, that would be New Zealand or Australia, these great uh, continent islands of Australia or the islands of New Zealand. But, of course, in the time when Isaiah was, was, was writing, these great places were not known. He was talking about the isles at the end of the world where you and I are living at the moment. Yes, we are mentioned there in the word of God. Amen.